in this video let us try to prove the important property that we used in the last video and also derive some results from that property that are very useful in themselves okay so we said that hcf of any two numbers is equal to the hcf of if we keep the first number as the same or any number as the same a or b and add or subtract to the other number any multiple of the first number so b plus a k where k is an integer so it can be positive or negative so that is why we are adding and subtracting and a and b here are positive integers so a and b are greater than 0 all right so let me say that hcf of a and b is small h as i like to what does this mean this means that h divides a so a by h will be some integer p and h also divides b so b by h will also be some other integer q that is what a factor is right a factor can divide a and b so h is the factor of a and b that is why it can divide it and give us some integers now the property of this h in hcf is that it is the highest common factor this means that p and q will not have any other factors in common because if they did then that common factor could come out and join h and then we would have an even higher factor we have talked about this before what i'm saying is because hcf is the highest common factor p and q are co primes they do not have any other factor in common the hcf of p and q in other words is 1 okay so this means that a is equal to p h and b is equal to q h now let me just get b plus a k because that is what i want to use so b plus a k is q h plus p h into k right now here i can take h as common and i will get q plus p k now let us see what we are trying to prove here we are trying to prove that hcf of a and b this hcf should be the same as hcf of a and b plus a k so this is a and this is b plus a k what is the hcf of these two numbers we are trying to prove that they are the same hcf so this should also be h to prove this what i need to prove is just like p and q were co primes p and q plus p k are also co primes right because if they are co primes then h must be the highest common factor between a and b plus a k so can we prove that p and q plus p k are co primes let's see from q plus p k q plus p k we need to prove that there is no factor in common between q plus p k and p other than one if i take p common i get q by p plus k right if i'm taking p common from this now since q and p are co primes therefore this is not an integer i'm not writing everything i'm saying but when you formally prove it you should write everything and make it very standard but here i just want to tell you how we can prove this so because q and p are co primes there is no no cancellation that is going to happen for example 7 and 4 right we, we cannot simplify this further if they were not co primes for example if there were eight, if they were 8 by 4 then we could simplify it and it could turn into an integer but because p and q are co primes this is not turning into an integer this is not an integer it will not simplify into an integer and this is where the magic lies because this is not an integer and this is these two together will also not be an integer these two will also not be an integer so this means if i'm taking p common from this number i'm not getting an integer so that means so that means that there is no common factor between p and q plus p k right there is no common factor if there was a common factor this could have been an integer but this is definitely not an integer so therefore we can say that p and q plus p k are co primes they do not have any common factor and what does this mean <laughs> this means that h p and h into q plus p k will have h as their highest common factor right because there is no other factor that is common between p and q plus p k so h is their highest common factor 
and we are done we have shown that they have the same highest common factor right hcf so this is how you can prove this now let us see what this result what other results we can get from this result so if we take k as minus 1 we get hcf of a and b is hcf of a and b minus a right so this means that if we have the hcf of any two numbers let's say 9 and 16 this will be equal to the hcf of 9 and 16 minus 9 that is 7 so this is going to be 1 okay another important thing that we can prove from here is that hcf of any two consecutive integers is 1 let's see how we can prove this integers is 1 so let me take two integers uh, n and consecutive so the other one is n plus 1 now using this property I can say that this will be equal to hcf of I'm keeping n as the same and I'm subtracting this n from the other number n plus 1 minus n using my property using this property or this property so n can cancel from here and this gives me hcf of n and 1 and that is 1 <laughs> so this means that hcf of any two consecutive integers is 1 we have proved another important property that we can show is that hcf of any two odd numbers is 1 now I'm going to leave this up to you to prove this. Uh, just use this property again and you will be able to prove this. So any two odd numbers that means if we take 2n plus 1 as our first odd number we know that if n is any integer then 2n plus 1 is an odd integer and 2n plus 3 is the oh I said odd I meant consecutive odd any two consecutive odd numbers is 1. So any two consecutive odd numbers will have their HCF as 1. We can also show that HCF of any two consecutive even numbers is 2. This as well I am going to leave up to you. So if 2n is my first integer then the next even integer is going to be 2n plus 2 and this will have an HCF of 2. Alright, enough about this property. We can prove a lot. This is, as you can see, a very powerful property. Now let's practice some problems using this property.